I don't believe in God anymore because of the way my children and my family have treated me. There is nothing to believe anymore. I'm an atheist, y'all. Something about hearing, I'm an atheist, y'all, in Britney Spears' voice is just like, it's like a childhood dream come true. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. Britney's an atheist. I can't pretend not to be thrilled, obviously that's why I'm making a video. The announcement has drawn positive and negative reactions from the skeptic community as a whole, so I want to talk about both sides of that. I think this is one of those happy days where I think everyone is right. Before we dive in, today's video is not sponsored but I am going to talk about my own shit for a second, <laughs> real fast. If you have noticed this fabulous tea I'm wearing, it's actually a dress, this is a tea dress, and you're thinking, hot damn, that is some fine-ass merchandise, where can I buy it? You can, bu you can buy it from my store. <laughs> this is my new anti-god merch range, and I fucking love it. I love, obviously, I'm biased. I'll leave a link I'll leave a link to the still page down below, but I'll also leave a link in the Instagram to uh, the artist that made this. I just think this is the coolest, d just, just the coolest. Here, I've got the bottle, which is like a good way to show you. I mean, I'll put pictures on the screen. Emma, remember how this works? You're an editor. I just think that this is so fucking metal. It's like a metal album art. We've got the glorious goat skull, the anti-god theme. I just thought that this would be freaking awesome and I was right. You can see me in the t-shirt a lot. I've got myself a white version of the t-shirt. I'm just so fucking crazy for this design. The artist was absolutely phenomenal. I think it's okay for me to say this, so let the curtain slip and for you to see the business side for a second. This is the most expensive design I've ever commissioned and I gave a big tip because it's so fucking perfect. Having obviously bought myself samples to to check and make sure that the design was okay when I actually put the design on the merch, let's just say, unless a lot of people really, really like it, it's gonna take a long time, if ever, for me to break even on this design. That is just a fact, and that is a fact that I knew when I started and chose to just do and live with because I just think this is so cool that I wanted it to exist. <laughs> so if you do like it, like I said, you can get this in the form of regular t-shirt, you can get it in the form of a tea dress, you can get it as a swimsuit, you can get it on a water bottle, you can order this in a bunch of different ways. It's one of the just the coolest things that I've ever made and worn, and I'm really, really proud. You can find this on emma-thorn.com. Order now for arrival by Halloween. Mm? Vibes, Halloween vibes. There will be another special little design that I'm just waiting for a sample for coming out for Halloween that is a bit more cutesy and fun. If this is a bit too heavy metal for you, <laughs> there's a, a cuter Halloween design coming as well. Anyway, yes, this is just uh, me showing off this cute design. The main thing you've got to know if you're ordering it is that when you order on anything white, you get the kind of full breadth of colour. I made sure to take pictures in black and white merch just so that you can definitely see, but the website images are very clear as well. Anything that is printed on black or a very dark colour, if it's a dark design, it has a white base layer just so that you can just see the design properly. I think it still looks great, but so the design itself looks slightly different on black compared to white just so that you can actually see and enjoy all the colours and the prettiness. There you go, I haven't put this up yet because I'm scared I'll ruin it and I need a, I want a poster frame for it. But you can get it as... a matte poster. Isn't that incredible? Do please check it out on emma-thorn.com if you want this on your body or or to drink out of or whatever floats your particular boat, please do check it out over there. Starting today I'm going to do a discount for patrons over the course of sort of Halloween through now to the end of, well, Halloween. So if you are a patron you can get a discount on merch from now through to the end of October. You don't have to spend it on Halloween merch, that's not like a rule, I just think Halloween is great. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, back to the matter at hand. Britney. In case it's not clear who I'm talking about when I say Britney, I mean Spears. <laughs> I'm talking about Britney Spears, the famous pop star. Just in case you've been living under a rock, I only say this because I am often living under a rock when people talk about other sort of celebrity news. Britney was under a conservatorship for many, many years, um, it was controlled by her father, her finances, choices in terms of taking medication, having children, relationships, the, the amount of work that she did. It's quite disturbing, basically. It was, there was a, a campaign called Free Britney. It was essentially about removing her from this conservatorship, which has now happened. Yay. And we're very happy for her. There are people who have reacted in a sort of negative way 
ever since she's been free to express herself again. I've seen people essentially complain that some of her commentary might be a little bit erratic or dramatic. Basically, people have complained that Britney shows signs of trauma after years of abuse. And <laughs> I'm here to tell you that that's fucking life, man. I am one of those people. I am a leave Britney alone. I'm one of those people. I think she's had a hell of a life. I think the last few years have clearly been devastating to her. If you've not seen like the documentary about it, if you've not heard um, her phone calls through to court about it, it's emotionally devastating stuff. She went through a hell of a lot and um, all she was really begging for at the end is she wasn't she's talked about her finances since and uh, the sort of manipulation around that but at the time it was very much she was mostly just she just wanted to be with her partner she wanted to get married and she wanted to have a child with him and she wasn't allowed because of this conservatorship she was under and personally seeing her living her best life expressing her true feelings even if sometimes those feelings are of course angry and upset at what she has been through, I think that's fucking beautiful. I think it's amazing. I'm really proud and pleased to see pictures of her living the life that she wants and actually being free to do what she wants and being happy and stable and in control. I don't know, I just, I think that's good. So that's just a little bit of context to kind of explain um, why there has been so much sort of Britney news lately and this is why um, Br Britney is essentially in control of her own media presence now and her own PR so she's been able to use her social media to actually express her feelings on what she's been through for the last many many years so she's been talking a lot about her family and sort of directing comments at them and things like that. Recently she posted a voice message to her Instagram page. She was mostly talking to her sons Preston and Jaden particularly because I believe Jaden had recently done an interview where he talked about Britney and about the conservatorship. I just want to say that their experiences, because this must have been very difficult for the children as well, their experiences and their, their words and thoughts are equally valid. I do think that it's the responsibility of media outlets and it's interesting for them to have interviewed a 15 year old anyway. It's the responsibility of media outlets to, <laughs> to make bias known, in my opinion anyway. I think, it's, I think it should be part of the remit for the, the outlets that are doing these interviews to acknowledge that the 15 year old child who has been, you know, a child through all of this might not have the most accurate portrayal of what has happened to this woman. Especially when it comes to abuse, that's usually hidden. It's just, it's a bit like, you know, when, when somebody comes out of an abusive relationship, people often tend to still stick with or side with an abuser because they tend to be quite charming people. The people that don't have the awareness that are on the side of the abuser that, especially if they were minors during the abuse, that just don't have that understanding of what happened, I don't think that maybe publicising their views is healthy for victims. That's, that's what I think. Regardless, Britney did this voice message in response, and here's the key thing. She rejected God. She rejected religion. Let's just listen to the voice message so you know what the hell I'm talking about. I saw the paper from my poster. Big on foul beast. Anyway, <clears throat> Britney Spears, here we go. This is the voice memo from Britney's Instagram post. I can totally understand why my family would have a problem with me doing my own thing. Maybe because I never have. I'm sure it is a little bit different and a touch lighter. Me not being responsible for three 18 wheeler trucks with tour equipment and thousands of people to be responsible for on tour and dad and my robin in the corner of every room i've had to be in for the past 20 years so jaden as you undermine my oh fuck. i can't i just can't imagine how what that it makes me it makes me upset because i think about I, I genuinely did get emotional i know i'm such a sad britney stan but just what she's been through is so horrific like it, honestly if you haven't listened to her phone call to court it do it is really really emotional i can't imagine how freeing it must be to finally not have that presence the essentially the the person who controlled and abused you for all that time just in every room with you constantly while you're still being forced to do this insane volume of work that is not your choice this is specifically because i believe jaden said i'll find it and i'll drop it down below because i can't find it right now but um it was very he was being very 
positive about the conservatorship. And so Brittany is here kind of reiterating what that was actually like for her and kind of expressing how that makes her feel. So Jaden, as you undermine my behavior, just like my whole family always has with, I hope she gets better. I will pray for her. Pray for what? I keep working so I can pay off mom's legal fees in her house. Do you guys want me to get better so I can continue to give your dad 40 grand a month? Or is the reasoning behind you guys deciding to be hateful is because it's actually over in two years and you don't get anything. It is spicy. It's spicy. I look, I love spicy Britney. I do. I just think there's so much power in saying the truth. And they're teenage boys, and I completely understand where they're coming from from this perspective. This is a very difficult situation and is, like, part of just the, the in my opinion, the nightmare of having kids. But these kids have both expressed how they find it difficult to have a mother who has such a heavy social media presence. I would argue that she was sort of forced to have a heavy media presence by her father in the conservatorship for a long time. It is her life, it's her body, she posts racy selfies sometimes, if that makes her feel good, I think it's awesome, but I can also completely see how that would be awkward for a teenage boy who's at school or whatever. I get that. I just think that it's almost a little bit of, like, tone policing, getting upset with Britney for now venting her feelings on social media and things like that, because she's been forced to keep that inside for so long, and for so long nobody knew what she was going through. And I think it's so powerful for her and other victims who have been in similar situations to just hear her come out and say, look, this was fucked up, this happened to me, I'm angry about it, but I'm okay now. And I think for her to be like, you're sitting there acting like you want me to be better, like you just want what's best for me, when here's the reality, here's the fucking money I'm providing this family, here's the money I've always been providing, I've been forced to provide through this conservatorship. Are you just upset at the potential lifestyle change because you have to deal with me being my own person and not relying on me financially soon? It might be brutally honest, but I think that's honest and that should be celebrated. I love Brittany. I do. I know. I'm biased and sad, but I just love her. I sat in that kitchen and looked you straight in the eyes, beautiful boy, and said, how come I can't see you guys anymore? Or just see you guys more. I look forward to seeing you, seeing you guys weekly. You said, Mama, oh, it'll change. You and your breath, brother left me in that house always two hours early. Preston would sleep. You would play the piano the whole time. And if I didn't shower you guys with gifts and have amazing food ready and play a motherfucking saint, it was still never good enough. That is so <laughs> devastating to hear. And again, I can understand why it would be too difficult for them, you know, to be feeling so estranged from their mother that they find it difficult to engage with her. I can understand why they would want to ignore it and play the piano, leave early because it was awkward. I do completely sympathize with what they went through because they were young and that is really hard so i don't blame them for that i also completely understand how devastating that must be for britney as a mother to feel like she wants to see her kids she tries so hard but they're still just going out and just doing interviews complaining about her and what she does and how it's because the the sort of thing that um i know Jaden has said in interviews is that it's basically her posting on social media that is keeping her family away and I think that that's bullshit <laughs> to be honest and I like I said he's a teenage boy and that must be very difficult and it might change and become easier as he gets older and maybe their relationship will improve I hope it does because it sounds like they do love each other very much you can put that aside you can say ah oh, it's awkward that my mum posts to social media all the time you can still visit her and show her affection and not you you don't have to i don't know there's there's something a little bit hypocritical about repeatedly doing interviews sort of blaming her for not being involved with the family because she's not living the life that they want her to live and it almost feeds into a little bit of what britney said at the start which is that things are different now she is being her own person and they aren't used to her living her own life and doing what she wants to do and maybe it's just that they never would have agreed on what she wanted to do, maybe they never would have got on previously if she had been allowed to live the life she wanted. I think more likely they've just gotten used to her 
being a certain way and having to be a certain way and acting a certain way, she's now her own person. Maybe they should try a little bit harder to accept that instead of waiting for her to change or change back into the person she was forced to be. I don't know. I'm not in any of their heads, you know? God, I wish I had a... I wish I had a thought line directly into Britney Spears' brain, but I don't have that kind of power. I think that this is probably incredibly hard for all of them. So, sympathies all around. At one time I asked you, looking straight in your eyes, I want to see you more. You called your dad. I never saw you again. I didn't do anything wrong, and I know I'm not perfect, but the love I've given you and how much I adore you and your diplomatic ways, speaking like Paw Paw, self-entitled, this can be fixed, I will see her when she's better. Jaden, it was a miracle I could even have a normal conversation when I got out of that place. But you were just like my other family. You secretly loved looking at me as something was wrong with me. I didn't need a family hiding shit in houses and whispering shit behind my back, feeling subconsciously guilty because I paid for every fucking thing in both homes. I needed unconditional love and support, but guess what, the whole twist of it all, which would have made a little bit more sense, I was in the greatest state I'd ever been because I was actually able to speak up 100% and say no. It saddens me not one of you have valued me, valued me as a person. You've witnessed me how my family has been to me and that's all you know. Like I said, I feel you all secretly like to say something's wrong with me. Honestly, my dad needs to be in jail for the rest of his life. It's just fucking heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. And it's a, it's a very specific situation because she's an incredibly wealthy celebrity that did have mental health issues. And uh, people were, people in the family, again, I can't speak to their intentions, but it sounded like they were genuinely concerned about other people taking advantage of her. But so much of this does resonate with more ordinary forms of abuse, you know, abuse that the more ordinary person might experience. Just that the devastation of trying to explain that I'm my own person now, it's really hard for me to have you turn your back on me now that I can speak my mind and be myself and actually live my life. She said it, she said like it's a miracle I could even have a normal conversation when I got out of there. Like that shit is traumatic. That's when you're at your lowest point, that's when you need the unconditional support because you're not going to be in the best place. And yes, a, a, a child is not going to be the best person to provide that unconditional support because they don't understand, they've got to deal with their own shit, their own trauma related to this. So I completely get that. That doesn't change how much it must hurt to constantly be the, well, mum's just not very well. She's just not very well. That is like the epitome of, I want to say gaslighting almost, just that her whole life she's just had everyone in her family and in, in her life and even in the public just being like, oh, Britney's not well. She's not well. Everything will be fine when she gets, when she gets better. You know, it's all, uh, like it's all, everything that happens is, is her fault and the result of uh, just something's just not right with her. And no responsibility for the abuse and the trauma that other people have inflicted on her. And she genuinely is. You can tell. As much as the stuff with her children is clearly really hurting her, you can tell that she is so much happier and healthier now getting out of the conservatorship. Like, it is clear. And yes, it's a big change and it's probably hard to deal with, but if you're in her family, you must at least be able to see how much happier she is, right? We're getting to the meat. But like I said, God would not allow that to happen to me if a God existed. I don't believe in God anymore because of the way my children and my family have treated me. There is nothing to believe anymore. I'm an atheist, y'all. <laughs> Something about hearing, I'm an atheist, y'all in Britney Spears' voice is just like, it's like a childhood dream come true. <laughs> and this is such a like, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be too much of a goof because this is a really harrowing thing that she's, she's talking about the abuse that she's suffered. And this is about her and her family more above all else, right? 10 year old me was dancing around my bedroom to Britney Spears and the fact that she was raised Southern Baptist and was very, you know, sort of Christ-centric was like, 
it didn't it didn't stop me from loving her music but the idea of her saying i'm an atheist y'all that would have absolutely ended me as a child i would have died and gone to heaven <laughs> ironically i would have died and gone to heaven if i had heard that as a kid religious background of britney yes she was raised southern baptist and she was for most of her life she got super into kabbalah when that was really big in Hollywood, Kabbalah is like a um, a, a certain path of uh, Jewish mysticism. I don't know why it got massive in Hollywood. Different, it's like different specific sects of different religions seem to blow up in Hollywood every now and again. And it's like when one of them gets big, all the celebrities join it. So I don't know, they were all in Kabbalah for a while and so was Britney. And then she renounced that. And I think it was this year or last year, she started trying going to a Catholic church. And that obviously hasn't worked out. Now, she's an atheist, y'all. So listen, a lot of people have a problem with this. And a lot of people are quite rightly saying that uh, Christian apologists are going to be frothing at the mouth at this kind of statement. Because, unfortunately, Britney does here play into a very popular straw man, the whole... I'm an atheist because I I hate God, because I've been treated poorly. It's something that I hear very often from apologists. It's something that I hear very, very, very rarely from atheists. So let's talk about it for a second. Okay. I do not think there is anything wrong with uh, rejecting religion as a result of trauma, abuse, the way you've been treated. I think that's more than reasonable actually. Especially when you have grown up with a religion that specifically teaches you that the deity is all loving, that he loves you, you're his child, uh, and you must give him your unconditional love. Any rational person who has the uh, capacity to think this way, by which I mean not having been brainwashed, essentially, would look at that and say, how can somebody who loves me unconditionally and I am their child, etc., keep letting these unbelievably cruel things happen to me, and by extension my fellow man. And I think this is a legitimate philosophical reason for uh, being non-religious, possibly not for being atheist. It's uh, difficult because you can be a theist and be non-religious. You can even be religious and reject the idea of this kind of Abrahamic all-loving God, which is why I think the context of Britney's religious upbringing is important because even when she's flirted with other religions it has always been this particular god so i think it's probably safe to say this is her rejecting the abrahamic religions that she grew up with that she's used to in my opinion it's not fair to fucking nitpick and be like what i just said where well, you can be religious without believing in that type, kind of god or you can be a theist without being religious etc etc because this is very clearly based on her personal experience which all revolves around this abrahamic god which is the problem and i think that coming away from that whether that's as an atheist or agnostic or whatever i think coming away from that is a net benefit for society i think society is better when it is secular that is just my opinion don't shoot me in the comments i can't wait for the you desperately need to repent you'll change your mind when you're burning in the fires of hell or whatever it is today. That's my opinion. I'm literally wearing a dress that says anti-God, so. So my point is that you might, um, you might prefer her to call herself agnostic. Um, it might be more beneficial if she had done some, because this, again, this was about her and her children, right? This is about her responding to this interview and, and the treatment by her family. It probably would be more beneficial if she was going to talk about being an atheist to have a long thing to explain that it's the Abrahamic God that she doesn't respond to. Um, maybe she would be more agnostic, blah, 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 whatever. The point is very clear. If you understand the context, you understand what she means. And I think that her saying, I have been treated absolutely terribly, there's no way there there could be a god while these things have happened to me. I'm an atheist. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And I don't think it should be so aggressively challenged. However, like I say, it does it does really fit into the straw man that you get. It's the god's not dead straw man, right? The um I don't believe in God because I hate God. Very few people are like that, right? Very few people are like that. Like I said, I think it's completely valuable to see the suffering in the world and be like, obviously the God of the Bible cannot exist. The God of the Bible that you claim is all... Either the God of the Bible... Well, Bible's inherently contradictory and put together by man and isn't something you could ever, ever rely on as a source of faith 
in my opinion. Anyway, <laughs> there's a lot of caveats in this discussion, aren't there? <laughs> I think it's completely fair and rational. I, I don't think it's, you know, coming from some emotional perspective, I think it's a perfectly rational thing to look at the world, look at the suffering and say there cannot be an all-loving God. I think that's completely normal. And I'm going to go back to our old friend. So we actually touched on this a little while ago. We read this comment. It was provided to us by um, a Muslim channel trying to prove that God exists, which is fantastic because uh, this is a brilliant quote from Epicurus. He was a third century BC philosopher, Greek philosopher. Was he Greek? He was. <laughs> I don't know why I was suddenly plagued with doubt over whether Epicurus was um, Greek. <laughs> okay, that's where I'm at. Um, this is his quote. Is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Why is there suffering in the world? Why should there be suffering in the world? Why should somebody like Brittany be abused for so long by her family? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? This has obviously stood the test of time since the third century BC and is, in my opinion, still a very valid philosophical is what I was about to say is still a very valid philosophical standpoint and uh, philosophical reason to move away from religion. Apologists love it. They, they do kind of love this. Well, there can't be a God because there's so much suffering and awful stuff in the world. And they love to blame things like the fall, which again, I just want to remind you that everything that happened ever, but especially in the beginning, was all God's plan and God's fault and God's creation. So that doesn't really work for me. They love to say things like, he moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> we simply don't know. He has a plan. He has a plan. There's a reason that tiny babies die of AIDS in such high frequency every day. There's a reason. It's God is still loving. He does love you. Um, and I just think that anyone who says something like that in the face of a person denouncing God after suffering 20 years of abuse and control um, can fuck off, <laughs> honestly. Some people find God through trauma. I think part of that is because religion is predatory. Especially Christianity is often very predatory when people are suffering. But some people do find God as a result of trauma, bad experiences, and that helps them and improves their lives. Some people experience and see real suffering and that completely contradicts everything they've learned from Christianity. They've, they've been taught this sort of just world thing where, you know, the good things happen to good people and all you have to do is pray and trust and believe. And that hasn't worked. They've still suffered immeasurably. And as a result, they can't believe in God. I think that's fucking valid. I understand why atheists would be upset about this because it is an excuse for apologists to hone in on a straw man with the fucking terrible arguments like God is mysterious, everything happens for a reason. Your terrible suffering happened for a reason. In my opinion, we should just middle finger the people who use those terrible arguments as a result and not the people who have gone through trauma and rejected their religion as a result. I think Obviously, because I've been a huge fucking stan through this entire thing, I think we should be fucking welcoming Britney with open arms. And I think that if instead of getting hung up on, oh, she's used, she's used a, a reason, an argument that uh, apologists really like to argue with or whatever, or to straw man atheists with, whatever, I think if we focus on the fact that she was basically like, does God pay all of your bills? No, I fucking do. I'm in control of my life. My life is finally back in my hands. And uh, I'm pretty convinced after all of my suffering at the hands of my family, thank you very much, that there is no God. I'm an atheist now. I think we should be like, fuck yeah. The only thing that can improve the world is people. I am so sick and tired of being told, as I do get told very often, that the only way, the only hope, the only light is Jesus Christ. And only by believing in Jesus Christ can we find true peace and happiness. That's bullshit. <laughs> and Brittany proves it. I think some people are so afraid of that being the truth because it is so hammered in. They are so afraid of not being able to be happy, not being able to find peace and joy without their religion, that 
they don't dare to question it. And I am here to tell you <laughs> that you can have the most beautiful, joyous, happy life whilst being anti-God. Please check out my merch store. <laughs> I think um, Brittany is very welcome in the atheist community. I also want to say, you know, she's uh, dipped in and out of different religions. She's tried a few different things. If she went back to being a religious person and had a different approach um, to this kind of, um, you know, the suffering question, that would be okay too. And I think uh, the atheist community should still support her. This woman has been to hell and back, honestly, and uh, and I think that we should just celebrate this moment of beautiful, brutal honesty. We should just enjoy somebody finally getting to live their truth and express their feelings and live honestly, and we should enjoy thoroughly that amongst that is her rejecting religion. Specifically rejecting Christianity. Well, I guess rejecting Abrahamic religions because she did go, she did go for Kabbalah for a while, like everyone did. Maybe that's a maybe that's a video on its own. Maybe I need to look into how the fuck that happened. That do you know what that is actually? That is an interesting idea for a long term project. The um, rise of various niche religious groups in Hollywood. Let me know if that's something you want to see. I'm not trying to become a celebrity gossip channel, by the way. If you're worried about that, that's not <laughs> that's not a thing that I'm particularly interested in. Just genuinely, I loved hearing this. It, even though obviously some of it is so sad and harrowing to hear what Brittany went through and how she feels, I was just so thrilled to hear her deny God, if that's not weird. You know, I do have that that absolute childhood love for Britney so much and just seeing her be able to express herself and be herself is just so wonderful and I just want I just want to support that in any way I can. I think it's amazing. And it's an opportunity to remind everyone that you shouldn't stop supporting people whenever they show small signs of, you know, mental illness. It was, it was an interesting talking point all round, I thought. So um, let me know what you think. Share your thoughts down below. Tell me I'm going to hell, whatever. Um, and do please check out emma-thorn.com to get your anti-god merch. The Patreon discount will be live right now. So if you are a patron, you can go check that out. And if you're not a patron, you can check out the Patreon. Check it out. Just check it. Yeah, have a look. It's cool. We do stuff. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching, for listening to me ramble on about Britney Spears for God knows how long. I'm not going to mention the time and we'll just hope I can edit it down. <laughs> Before we go, I must give a huge shout out to my giant chickens over on Patreon. Have a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon for something non-celebrity related. I promise. <laughs> well, does Kent Hovind count as a celebrity?